with Fluoride Free Windsor, who will be making a presentation this evening. Good morning, Kim. Good morning. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about what will happen tonight at County Council. Well, the council is being presented with the health unit's um, 2018 oral health report. And uh, that they're to be commended for bringing it to the county because typically they ignore the county with these reports and they only, um, they only go to city. But um, it was actually Mayor Francis back in 2012 that criticized them for, you know, our whole region and yet they never come out here. So, so good for them for actually coming out here. And, um, and county council will listen to the report and uh, I guess they could make some kind of a decision. They can't really decide to begin water fluoridation because as a body they don't actually govern any particular water system. Each individual municipality um, either has their own or shares one with another municipality and those decisions would be made at the municipal level, not at the county level. But, you know, these are the county councils made up of our mayors and our deputy mayors and so whatever is said tonight or whatever kind of opinions they make will will then be brought back to their individual councils. Okay, so we are looking at um, Amherstburg, Lakeshore, Tecumseh, LaSalle, Kingsville, Essex. Um, and so what is happening, what happens right now, uh, Kim, as far as those municipalities are concerned? So Leamington's also in there. And just to correct something you said, currently there is no fluoridation in all of Windsor-Essex. But typically, historically, most of the county has never fluoridated, fluoridated ever. But at present, the whole county, including the city, is fluoridation free. Um, and I'm sorry, the, the question I missed, um, what was it you asked me? <laughs> My apologies. Well, that was it. Are there, any, um, are there any municipalities with fluoridation at this point? And the answer is no. No, and they've, and they've more recently taken positions on it because they've been presented with, um, I think it was a couple of years ago, there was an MPP uh, from a Toronto area that was trying to look at maybe making it a mandatory thing. And so all the municipalities in Ontario were presented with this um, potential. And I think just about everybody in the county addressed it at that time, every single, every single one of them reinforcing their um, opposition to fluoridation, the rejection of fluoridation. And so the health unit, it's definitely got its um, work cut out for them if they're going to change their mind. And, and, the, and unfortunately, the report doesn't do anything to prove fluoridation prevents cavities. It, it's not a very scientific report at all. It doesn't control for any factors. Um, you know, their, their data is presented in, in uh, percentages, which, um, which we really need to insist they don't do because um, in real terms, 50% means zero to half a cavity. And that's really what it boils down to. The difference between our worst case and our best case in this area is less than half a cavity. So they're asking for a pretty big big uh, move and change to our water supply for potentially the, the saving of less than half a cavity. Okay. Um, and th I'm, I'm looking at the report here, and Amherstburg was the one that uh, halted it in, in 2011, correct? It used to do it. Uh, as of now, it does not. So the first community was Lakeshore. They stopped in 2011. Amherstburg stopped in 2011, and then, and then um, the reason they stopped was for, because of equipment needing expensive upgrades and then in 2013 they actually just passed the bylaw to just stop until until they their their bylaw was specific they wanted the um the government to address the issue of worker safety and provide evidence that their town employees wouldn't be harmed from handling hydrofluorosilicic acid which is a volatile toxic substance and um i just checked with their with their um, water department and they never did receive a response on that from the government Okay, and that was in Amherstburg? Amherstburg was 2011, and then again 2013. Lakeshore was 2011. Tecumseh and LaSalle stopped in 2013 when, well, Windsor Utilities stopped. Everybody else was always fluoridation-free. So, the, you know, the reason they were, because when, when water systems were first um, starting to be commissioned back in tw uh, 1960s, they all looked at fluoridation. It was a, it was a typical thing to consider fluoridation. And Union Water, which supplies Kingsville, Leamington, and Essex, they they rejected it, and they had concerns about the food processors using water to create baby food. And Heinz didn't basically. I think Heinz had an ownership in the water system, and they didn't want it in their baby food. And so, um, the Union Water Supply System came out with a position on water fluoridation in 2015, 
and they have concerns, and their concerns are, you know, they, they're not interested in peace. That's not their mandate. Their mandate is to provide the safest water possible, and so their concerns include the fact that fluoridation chemicals do not improve the quality of the water. Um, they, should, they express concerns about the health and safety of their staff and uh, the concerns about renegotiating contracts with with their operations and maintenance uh, people. They are concerned about the agricultural and food industry. We have a large canning and greenhouse industry, which is dependent on a very high quality of water. Uh, they were concerned about the corrosion of pipes because we know that fluoridation chemicals change the water's pH and increase corrosion. And they were concerned about the millions of dollars that it would be needed for new infrastructure, new equipment, new control systems, ongoing operations and maintenance costs. So as a water supplier, you know, most of the water suppliers, I would imagine, are opposed to water fluoridation. It does not improve the water, and their mandate is very specific about providing the safest, cleanest water possible. How do you answer people, Kim, who say and, and reports that say, well, you know, our, our children's teeth are being affected by not having fluoride in our water? Well, I would say that their opinion is not backed by the science, and it's certainly not backed by this, this uh, report from from the um, health unit. The health unit has not shown at all how fluoridation impacts teeth. And there are peer-reviewed Canadian published studies that show uh, when fluoridation ends, tooth decay does not increase. And, and you know, our, our um, community would have been a perfect, perfect place to do that kind of a study where you control for these factors because we had the city stopping and we had the county who never did. And instead of doing some kind of an analysis where they're comparing, because we do, we do live in the same community, we have access to the same resources for the most part. I mean, there's definitely barriers based on income, and, and that's got to be a factor that's included. That's what makes this study scientific is we, we consider access to fluoride from other sources. We consider access to a dentist, what their diet is, what their income is. These are all things that must be included for us for to be considered scientific. And those exist, and they all show that fluoridation doesn't work. So um, in, in this report that lumps everybody together, whether they're new to Canada, whether they've ever gone to a dentist, or whether they never drink water, it just lumps them all together. The, the best they can argue is that it saves half a cavity. So it's not uh, the opinion that water fluoridation helps teeth is not backed by any data or by the science. Um, and and the, the concerns regarding the chemical uh, as a health harm are plentiful. And, um, you know, it's something that um, Canada has failed to do is to caution and warn parents of infants. And this is, this is something I hope to make um, a point of tonight. The American Dental Association warns parents that if they live in a fluoridated community, they should not be using fluoridated water to mix with baby formula. And when we presented this to Windsor uh, five years ago, Councillor Halberstadt, um, he made a really strong comment that they should have been warning parents all this time in Windsor. And so, um, so basically the American Dental Association, Association says buy water that isn't fluoridated to mix with formula or even better, breastfeed. And breast milk filters out fluoride for a baby. So, you know, we, we would all agree that breast milk is a baby's best um, perfect food. Well, the mother's body filters out fluoride, and the baby barely gets any. But if a, a formula-fed infant lives in a fluoridated community, they're being heavily overdosed. And this is going to possibly lead to dental fluorosis, which is when your teeth um, start modeling, and, and the mild form is a bunch of white spots, but it can get to be brown spots. And the dental industry says, well, that's just cosmetic, which is great for them because they make a lot of money cosmetically fixing it. But really, it's, it would be naive of us to think that that the teeth we can see as a biomarker of fluoride toxicity is the only harm happening, that there isn't something similar happening internally to things we can't see, like our calcium-dense bones. So fluoride is attracted to calcium, so that's why it helps your teeth, because your teeth are, you know, the calcium in your teeth. But, it, you know, studies show, and I, um, we recently shared this on the Fluoride Free Windsor Facebook page, a, a, re, a study that showed if somebody is calcium deficient, which is often the case in someone who, who has a poor diet and maybe, maybe can't afford things like milk. And if you're calcium deficient, then um, fluoride actually can hurt your teeth. So, again, this is, a, um, you know, hurting the poor, not helping them. And, and something, I, I, you know, I think we really need to realize is that the province is what's responsible for health care, not municipalities. It's the province's duty. And by offloading this 
to municipalities, they're abdicating this responsibility of addressing real barriers to access to dental health care. They're hiding behind this idea that, oh, there's something in the water, so you're fine. Without, you know, without any um, monitoring of, of how much water people are drinking, how much fluoride they're getting, uh, whether it's working. We know it's not working. Communities that continue to fluoride, including Chatham right next to us, their oral health report just came out and their, and their cavities are up. So, you know, every community is doing a poor job, it seems, at, at addressing the amount of cavities our children have. And um, maybe if we stop hiding behind fluoridation, we can start addressing the real barriers to care. And um, and the province really needs to step up and take responsibility for that. Okay, and your it's a, and, and and your point is that there are other barriers as and there are other reasons why we we develop cavities other than uh, those that claim it is due to uh, no fluoride in our water. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Kim. Anything further you'd like to add this morning? Um, I think that's pretty good. I really appreciate you you allowing us to have this time. And I think, um, you know, tonight when Council gets this report, they're going to be shown pictures of, of a few cases, anecdotal evidence of um, some people having decay. And I, I really hope that it, it spurs them to urge the province to strengthen access. We have two provincial parties. We have an election tomorrow. Two provincial parties have said that they will um, improve access to dental health by making uh, dental health something that is more accessible. And these provincial programs right now have a barrier to people who live in fluoridated communities. If you live in a fluoridated community, that's one of the eligi eligibility criteria to get access to a program is that you don't live in a fluoridated community. So by fluoridating, we put another barrier from, from people who can't afford to go to a dentist from accessing programs that are meant to help those exact people. So we really need to put the pressure on the province, whether it be, um, we need to target the kids who need it. This report from Health Unit, um, more than, more than most of those kids screened, most of them have zero cavities. Okay, so this is not most of our children. There is a group of children not being serviced who do have um, needs, and how do we meet those needs? That's what we really need to be looking at. The water supply is not the way we should be administering dental health care. These kids should be targeted with what they need. We should be looking at preventative, not waiting until they have a mouthful of cavities to then make it so they can access a program. Why aren't they getting, you know, most of us remember as children, this, the um, health unit coming in and giving us mouth rinse, fluoride mouth rinse right there in school. The, these are programs that would target the children who are at risk. Right. These are programs that would specifically address tooth decay and not... Um, you know, being adding a contaminant to our water supply. All right. Very good. Kim DeYoung with uh, Fluoride Free Windsor talking about what will happen at uh, tonight's county council. So once again, Essex County, for the most part, never participated in um, water fluoridation schemes. Uh, so out of uh, seven municipalities, we now have um, all of them fluoride free.